Thanks, thanks, Rita. Am I being uh, am I being too revealing? Um, not being I'm not just conservative again. <laughs> I didn't take none of the advice they gave me. <laughs> All right, ladies, we are live as of right now. That's right, cuz. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Thick Girls Radio Show. This is your girl Queen. And, and I'm your girl. Black I'm your girl. Hold on. I'm coming. I'm your girl, Black Glitter Glory, everybody. Glad to be here once again, everybody in Sedua Land, Instagram, and Facebook Land. Yes. Hi, everybody. Do everybody, oh, you guys on Instagram, do y'all hear everything in the background um, on um, Zoom and on um, Facebook? Let me know. Thumbs up. Hey, Roscoe. We about, you can you could chime in through um, Instagram or Facebook. We're about to be um, on the station in a minute as well. But I think we're on already. Y'all are on. Okay. Oh, hi, everybody. It's the door land as well. But she's not um, joining in on Instagram with us because um, her phone is not working. To um, the extra phone is not working. So if you want to see both of us, guys, you gotta go on um, Facebook. All right, so we ready to start the show? Yeah, no, I'm the building. Okay, everybody. So today, of course, we're gonna be talking about what everybody else is talking about, and then some, and that is the elections. We want to get everybody's, you know, how everybody's feeling about us having a new president and a new vice president. Hi, 721 East. So that's what the show, we're going to be talking about um, women, women, when, women winning. So we, I know, I don't know about y'all guys. I'm not at all excited about Biden winning, winning the election, but I'm excited because him winning means that we have a sister in, in one of the highest ranks of the titles that you could get, you know, other than the president. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. You want to say anything, Black? Of course. I'm super excited. Yay! <laughs> this is history, everybody. It's amazing. Our ancestors are standing up. They are cheering on. We turned Georgia blue. We turned Pennsylvania <laughs> blue. We got women in the office, highest rank in the government. What are you talking about? This is Chief time Heidi. to celebrate. Are you kidding me? Well, I'm listen, listen, I don't know what I'm calm, down, calm down, you little Georgia peach, because you had us nervous. You huh? had us nervous. I said, you need to calm down, because you had us nervous, because Georgia, they was dragging their feet. You know, New York, we came okay. here. We did our thing. We made our vote. We did our counts. Georgia, y'all had us hold up. Huh? You keep freezing. Now a lot of numbers and voting, and that a lot of numbers in Georgia, and we voted early, and we had nothing oh, to do with how they were counting the system. I want to give kudos to Keisha. I want to give kudos to Keisha Lance Bottoms, my girl Stacy Abrams. They tried to hold her down 
uh, uh, Governor Purdue, but she bust back. She got 800,000 non-voters to get in there and vote. You got her, yeah. Black women. We done grown up. I'm loving it. What's up, Georgia? Keisha, my girl Keisha, my girl Stacey, and Camilla. You like Keisha because your name's name. <laughs> We have, people, we have people chiming in on Instagram, right? And a whole lot. They say, I'm happy that we get to see a black woman in office. And no, I am not a Trump supporter, but I choose Biden over him any day. So I'm happy about that. And I feel relieved when they said he won. Grateful that he won because I just felt like we're, we've we been in hell for four years. That was Aretha. Then we have um, Michelle. She said, let's first let's first let's do a class on how the electrical vote electoral votes are obtained because it's another person says our votes don't count i'm going to scream <laughs> uh, ayana says yeah georgia wasn't georgia was real sketchy so yeah that's what they're saying oh i didn't go on you're going to read the comments on let's see about facebook you want to be i'm um, look checking the comments on facebook or you want me to do that so I'm not yeah, so guys, are you guys excited? We have a woman vice president. Not only she's a woman, she is a black woman. And we're going to talk about that as well. I'm tired of everybody trying to discredit this woman, trying to say that she's not black. And everybody know if you got an ounce of black in you, you are black. Okay. This woman um, father is Jamaican. You don't get more um, black than Jamaican unless you're African. <laughs> So leave her alone. She is black. She and we should be very happy. So I mean, I feel like even if you're not happy about Biden, because we all know that it was a hard, it wasn't that hard for me to choose because I hated Trump. But we know that Biden got his own little um skeletons and stuff in his closet as well. But it's just like we had to choose from the lesser evils. And you know, at this point, we know what we was working with with Trump, and we could not have another four years of that. So if you can't get excited for Biden, just get excited for Camilla. Right? I well, I mean, it's no, it's no, you know, it's no perfect candidate anyway, even if it's no ideal candidate anyway. But yes, you absolutely right. They should be getting happy that a sister, you know, has stepped up to the plate. Biden, he ain't the best, but you know, he was he a step up from what we currently had. We had blat blatant, um, you know, discord in the country. So now we'll see what he going to pull together. But yeah, definitely. They've been hard on a sister and they always hard on sisters. That's why we named the show Women Winning. We always, you know, get the least credit for all of the work that we have to do. And we always work thrice as hard. They always try to disqualify us by minimal, you know, minute, you know, things, fr frivolous things. So, but we just, you know, got to band together and realize the good in all of this. And that is the, the, the historic Kelly, um, things that happened. You shared on Facebook? You shared it on Facebook? All the historic stuff. I'm excited. Carolyn. What y'all hanging out there on Facebook? Yes. What y'all? I don't see it shared on Facebook. Uh, it's on Lakeisha's page. Lakeisha, go to your page. I'm looking at it. Oh, okay. So we got to share. So I got to press. How do I share it on my page as well? See, we're not, you and I is not connected on Facebook. Lakeisha's connected me on Facebook. So it's on Lakeisha's page. Mm -hmm. Oh, so she put Fatima on Facebook? Queen on Facebook? Okay, so she now. Her page. I just now shared it on my page, guys. So hopefully y'all can see y'all can see the link on my um Facebook page as well. Yes, we know. I'm excited. They said, but black is in there, and if she get pulled over by the cop, she black. Exactly. That's the that's the that's the test of black. You know, what I mean, you you want to know if you black? Get, if you getting harassed or pulled over and stuff, or the moment you get pulled over and they identify you as a black person, you're black. I don't care how light skinned you are and all of that. The woman is black. So let's please like get off that thing right there. She's black. That's the same thing that they tried to pull with Obama. Oh, he's not black. Oh, you know, he's not American. I mean, he's not a citizen. He's not this. Like, it's like 
can we have our moment without them without somebody trying to ruin it? <laughs> what is the um what is the no, she mo she's multi race. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, so that's what we're gonna be talking about. And um today we're gonna um be having a, a guest on there. She's also gonna be um a, a black woman who is a you could tell us about the guest that's gonna come on, Keish. Black. Oh, the guest that's coming on um today is Miss Jessica. Um she is um the owner of um, a contracting company. She's actually a female contractor. She is doing a tremendous job around Georgia. She does all the hard work. She lays it down brick and mortar. So I'm excited to have her on. You know, she is in the male dominated industry and she is completely win winning. She goes out there and she sells and not does, not only does she sell, She's installing, um, you know, these bathrooms and doing these different jobs hands on. I've never seen a woman out there drilling and knocking down sheetrock and everything and such. So I'm excited, um, you know, to have her on the show and hear her perspective because, um, you know, a lot of times in, in these male dominated industries, women don't get um, as high as pay. And, you know, it's, it's a, a whole, you know, different um, in the aspect business okay so but she'll be on we'll have her joining in soon so you can hear everything all the tea that she got <laughs> about what she's doing and how it's impacting the communities and what it means for her to see this this black woman in office and you know doing what she does yes and we're also hey Benny, and we're also going to be talking about um women what how, how are we gonna how am i gonna describe it we're gonna talk about um you know how women are perceived assertive how assertive women are perceived and how you know so a, a lot of men be wanting um women to dumb themselves down to make them feel comfortable so that's what we're going to be getting into on the, later on on the show as well um, so what have everybody been doing for the last two weeks that, for the last two weeks that we have been out? I know, everybody know the last show I had, oh, a, uh, FYI, I'm still celebrating my birthday, so I'm still, you know, accepting gifts and anything. Last show, I was in Atlanta, we had a ball out there. I'm back in New York, I was greeted back to New York with more, you know, birthday love, so I'm appreciating it. It's still Scorpio season. So again, I'm still accepting gifts. But um, so how is your how have your two weeks been since the show, Miss Black Glory? My my two weeks have been really good. I'm, you know, happy and pleased about, you know, it was like, you know, a lot going on as far as this presidential race and voting and I was so excited um, that my sons were so involved and they had so much information it's amazing how the young people you know are so sensitive now so kudos to Denim and Dallas um, Dallas knew all the candidates that were running he knew John Ossoff he knew Raphael Warnoff he knew a lot about it and I was just amazed at how much him and Denim knew, and Denim was really challenging me on, you know, mommy, why are you not voting for Trump and this and that? So I had to really talk to the boys. So it was kind of exciting, and the whole voting process for them to go to it with me and everything that was okay. just a great learning experience. And so they were, um, you know, very happy to help me decide, and they were paying attention to the machine. And then when they got their stickers, you know. So it was exciting to, uh, you know, see it through the, the little you, people's you, eyes. And I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Did you say you did early voting or you waited to the day of to vote? No, I waited to the actual day of to Me vote. And and it's never a big line. In my county and in the county that I'm in in Georgia, it's never, like, as soon as we pulled up, it was very few people there. We got right through. It was not a wait. It wasn't. A lot of people voted early, so... But never did I have, you know, in the history of me voting, 
in my county that I ever have to wait on a long line or do anything. It's always a really quick process. So, and I knew that. that. That's what I was going to ask everybody about how was they, um, you know, voting experience. I know a lot of my people did early voting. I myself waited purposely to do the day up because I just wasn't, I never did this early day early voting thing. I never did this absentee violent thing. And I, it did, you know, I felt like this election was so important that I did not want my vote not to count. So I just didn't trust the early voting thing, you know, cause you know, Trump was trying to dispute everything. So I was like, I'm going to do it the old fashioned way. And I had put it in my mind. You know what I mean? If it takes me just having to sit there, I mean, sit online for hours, I'm going to have to do it. But luckily, you know, my voting um, poll is right directly across the street from me, like 100 feet. So um, initially, when I first got up in the morning, it was a very long line. So I opened up my door and I was like, oh, no, I'm not going out there now. So I did that a couple of times a day. And I was like, as soon as I saw it was a no line, I literally got in there and got out in like 15 minutes. So um, the whole voting experience for me was not bad at all. Ayana said she voted early on her birthday and, and got lucky and only waited 30 minutes. This is what I don't understand. Like New York is a big city and we got it together. We got out there, we voted and we got our count together. They had our absentee violence, I'm um, counting and our actual um, votes that happened that same day. And we got our numbers in so early. I don't understand why is it that some of these other states took so long? And some of them, like they said, what, Nevada? We still don't have the um, results from Nevada, right? Like it's still um, in the air. A lot, of people did the, a lot of people did the ballots. They didn't actually physically go in and vote. So it caused them to have to count those that took a little bit longer. A lot of people out here in certain counties in Georgia, um, they, they, you know, did the mailing. They didn't actually physically you know, vote. No, what I'm saying is in New York, we did both. We did we did mail-ins, we did early voting, we did the actual voting. I don't, I think, I felt like they need, at, at this point, as long as it was taken for them to come up with these numbers, I was like, they need to hire the people from New York, like to go over there and help the other states. Cause we, it was, it was getting, I was getting anxious and I, I, my anxiety was going on. I was like, okay, now what the hell is really going on? And, and then they uh, bench life said they still count with absentee votes. That's crazy. That, I mean, it doesn't matter at this point. We got we know who won. The good they, thing. The good thing about it is so many people voted that even with with the slow counting of the ballots, it was able to determine. I mean, right. never in history has this probably many people voted. So it's what it was amazing. Did they say like six? How many million? I don't want to misquote it, but I think I heard 64 million. Yeah, I thought I heard 64 million people voted. Like, whatever the number was, nobody in, um, never in um, election history has this many people voted. You know, it's crazy when people that ain't never vote, voted. We, we thought we had, we had that kind of reaction for Obama. No. No, people was on lines with chairs. They did what they had. They food pack. They was doing whatever they had to do to vote to get this guy Trump out. And you know what? I love the fact that when when they when the um the um results came in like yesterday, I wasn't you know I wasn't out um I wasn't glued to the station. I wasn't glued to the TV, but you could feel the energy, and I was hearing it online or whatever. And in New York, they were celebrating. I heard like all in all other states, they were celebrating. It's like a different type of energy going on right here. Just the mere fact that we know that he's getting ready to get the fuck out. Like, it is so crazy that this man <laughs> has caused so much division that people are celebrating. Not that Biden won, that he is getting out of there. They like doing dances. Oh, you know, the internet don't have no chill button. All the memes and all of the um, videos that I've seen come on, on talking about Trump and all of the, he's fired and all the songs, F Trump and all this that, that they doing on the internet. It is hilarious. I'm like, wow, they don't waste no time. Like within minutes of the decision, they had these memes and stuff out. He's gotta like be feeling like he's ready to kill himself. I, you well, imagine? I mean, 
Well, uh, he, 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 in his delusional mind, he really they love me. that somebody fraud. Yeah, they, 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 they like, oh, he like, yo, no, they, they, that's just um backwards love. They, they, um, that hate is just backwards love. They hate, I mean, they love me. They don't really hate me. Yeah. And the fact that this man actually, I didn't get to see it, you know, when he after the um, what was it after the third or whatever at the end of the night, they said he got on on TV and said that he's winning or he won or something like that. Like I have never in my life. And, you know, I got some liars in my family. I grew up around some real liars. I've never seen nobody lie like this man. And for this man to be the, he was the president of the United States, it was so disturbing. Like he lies about the littlest, most simplest thing. It's no, just he, like, he, I don't know. He really is delusional though. He really believes that. Guy. Yes. Like he's really a lunatic. <laughs> Like, really, I think, like we were saying, he has some form of a mental, you know, everything. His elevator is stuck on 13, like my grandmother hey, said. Hey, P. Hey, Moni. Oh. So, P said we need the Senate. Okay. Hey, Papa. Hey, Leash. Hey, everybody on Instagram. Oh, they said Brooklyn was lit last night. I know. I know. I heard. Oh, it was like a party outside in Brooklyn. <laughs> How was it in Georgia? Was they partying in Georgia? Yes, yes. It was It was a beautiful... You know what? The irony, it was a magnificent day. It was the weather yes. was like... It was a summer day. I was in Jersey yesterday, and I literally had to go sit in the car because it was so hot, and the, and the mosquitoes was like eating me the hell up. Like, yep. it was like a hot-ass summer day. I was just like, what is going on? Like yes. they, they couldn't have picked a better day to give us that good news. Like yes. really. Mm -hmm. And it just made the atmosphere so much more lava. You know, we have been through so much. It just mm -hmm. really took a load off of yes. us. So know that we're gonna be rid of this man in about what's this? Another month or two. We could be we could literally send him packing. So my thing is, what do everybody think he's gonna do? Like. So he's not conceding. He's not conceding. So he is going to be a problem to get out of that White House. He's he's got attorneys. He's got, I mean, every he's going to come up with every. I think they're going to have to get the military to get him out of here. Right, right. You know what I thought immediately? I was like, you know how some people they had such a bad relationship with they um land, they landlords or where they live at and when they leave they be, when they finally move out they cut the cable wires and stuff and stop up the toilets and do you know do shit to mess up the house I was like I, they better be on yeah. Trump they better be watching him because I know he's in there trying to do little um vindictive wicked shit like yeah I'm gonna leave this for them I'm gonna leave you know what I wanted to know I don't know if I was asking you but I don't know if anybody out there in Instagram land, Facebook, face, Facebook land. Cause, oh, and let me, let me give y'all the number. If y'all want to call in, the number is 929-231-6415. So I want to know this because, you know, I'm not all about good about politics or whatever. So everybody knows that the president stays at the White House. Do anybody have any idea where, where the vice president stay? Because I know they can't. I know they're both not in the White House. So where is the vice president? Does anybody know? Do you know what? No, I think that she stays in her house. I she cannot. She cannot I mean, as the I vice mean, president. On a, she might be at Camp David. I don't know. I mean, she stays in an area. I don't think it would be her house, but I don't think it's the White House. Good question. They said it's a party in Philly. <laughs> He's gonna cry and have several temper tantrums. Yes. He's already Not doing. No, nah, they're gonna have to escort him out for out for tr trespassing. He's yep, going to f up the White House. Yes, I was wondering if they stayed there too. I was wondering if they stayed there too. No, yeah. So nobody out here could tell me the answer. To that there's no way that the because you know they say the vice president and the president cannot be at the same place at the same time. Like never because if right, right, not, right. you know. Um, the other one has to take over so we know they're both not staying in the white house so i'm just wondering like where does the vice president stay and i'm pretty sure 
they cannot. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a security breach. That breach. Let's say you stay. You used to stay in a regular house on Jamaica Avenue. So now you're the vice president. You will still be on in, in your little. No, no, no. Absolutely not. I didn't mean it like that. I'm just saying they stay somewhere, but not you know on the same. Not on the um at the okay, White House. Okay. Yeah, so any anybody nobody could tell. Let me see on Facebook. Do anybody anybody that's small out there that could tell us where does the um vice president vice president say? Oh y'all just as dumb as me. No, that's not nice. <laughs> What's up, Brooklyn Darling? The United States Naval Observatory. That's what somebody said. Okay. Oh, okay. That's I said Camp David. I said Camp David. Oh, we have some small people. They saying they stay in one of the absor observatory circles. Are y'all kidding? Is this a joke or is this really the real answer? That's the real answer. Okay. Right. Okay. Well, okay. Yes. Thank you, Mark. Mr. Mark Fox. Oh, that's Mark. Hey, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> we miss you. <laughs> Somebody said, I love how more people are asking questions about the government and the election process. Um, somebody said Virginia. Somebody said in DC, um, the observatory. Google say so. Oh, oh, and Google said it, that's it. Why you just ask Google? You right. Duh. No, we, we, wanted to see, we wanted to see who was just as lost as we were. Right. We didn't want to cheat and ask Google, and y'all probably yeah. cheated. All of y'all that got the answer, Mark. I know now. Mark ain't smart. Mark, I know you googled that answer. Oh, oh you said Mark, Mark ain't the one smart. that said it. Uh oh, Mark. We know you googled that shit. That's what it is. I didn't even think to Google. I don't know what's bugging because Google is my friend. I would ask Google everything. Like, what do I? What should I eat today, Google? <laughs> but um, yes. Yeah, so, so what, are, what else is everybody saying? Nope. Mark saying he didn't Google it. I don't believe you. I don't know. We got to get you yeah, um, the Quran. Oh, you, you kind of a deep brother. So you probably researched that. You know, we know you on that black power stuff. So uh -huh. probably all of that. He, no. He, he, look, oh, oh, exactly. He said he didn't Google. He asked Siri. <laughs> <laughs> Same shit, exactly. Same thing, exactly. right? <laughs> well, you didn't lie. No, you didn't ask Google, but you asked Siri. Oh, everybody, like I said, the number is 929-231-6415 for anybody that want to call in and chop it up with us. So um, we're that's what we're talking about right now. We're talking about the elections, and then we're going to have our guests, and then we're going to get into the real juicy topics where we want men participation and we want women participation on this topic. Well, look, I dress how the hell I want to dress, okay? And, and, and if and, I was skinnier, <laughs> yeah, be in trouble. Listen, if we were skinnier, this this wouldn't be cool Thick Girl Radio, okay? I'm just but saying. If, if, if I was um 30 pounds lighter, y'all will be fucking telling me to put some clothes on seriously. They think I, 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 I dress too sexy now or I need to dress more conservative. Like, look at me now. I got on my little lace or my little see-through or whatever. Y'all ain't see nothing. Y'all better be lucky I'm thick like this and I'm trying to keep it a little, you know, PG. But for some reason, you know, people think that, you know, they could dictate or they think that somebody should be dressed a certain way, you know, that women should be dressed a certain way. And you know what I find it so funny is these men that, these same men that be having a problem with how a woman is dressed or how they woman is dressed or whatever, they, these be the same ones that don't, they don't want no girl looking all whack or whatever. You know what I mean? As soon as you, as soon as you, they be like, can you spice it up? You be looking all regular and all like you cannot please these men out here. So that's why I well, yeah, you know, they want you to dress homely, um, you know. So nobody else looks at but, you. But it's not even, that wasn't even the issue. The issue was y'all need to stop. First of all, y'all men, you know, and we ain't men bashing, it's not all of y'all. But what I hate is if you, you know, you meet a guy immediately. 
as soon as you meet him. I don't know why they want to invite you to those ugly penises. Stop posting y'all penis. Oh, we going to talk about that too, guys. Sending the pics, because that's how it all initially started. Yes. Okay? And y'all feel, some of you justify it by saying you got two jobs, you got a car, you got a house. We could care less what you got. When a woman is is talking to you and she just meets you, we don't want to see your penis. We don't, because it's a big disrespect. It's a turn off or whatever. Yeah, we want to see it down the line eventually, but we don't want to see it in the first 15. The minutes, first 48 okay? hours, I should not be seeing your penis in the I first 48 see, hours. I don't know why we even have to verbalize this. Like, what is wrong with these? Right. Things? And why then y'all, are you guys that lost in the source that y'all don't know that ain't nothing cool about sending a picture of your penis to some woman that you're supposed to be interested in. You won't, you don't know her favorite color. You never took her on a date. You don't know if her breath stink or not, but you sending her pictures of your penis. And then when I, you know, for, for those of you guys who don't know what I'm talking about, that's what we're going to, you know, this is how this we came up with this topic. I was talking to this guy for like two days and not even a full two days before the 48 hour hit in, this man sent me a picture of his penis without me asking him or nothing. So I was like, why did you send me that? You know what? As a matter of fact, please do not contact me anymore. And you would think that that would have been the end of it. I said, don't call or text me. And this man just went crazy. He started getting a whole, whole bunch of weirdo stuff, started texting me like, oh, I need to um, think outside the box. And oh, why the hell are you getting all uptight over a dick pic and all that? And I'm just like, just leave me alone. Like, you know, I, certain things, I don't have no patience no more. First of all, let's back this up because, you know, we ain't no angels. Let's get it clear. Nobody's saying that we don't like dick pics or we never had a dick pic. But we right, want Now, to be, I ain't gay now. Everybody know that. Right, right. It's, that's <laughs> not the point. We're not that. saying that dick pics is totally out. But you got to be our shorty, our, you know, we didn't establish a relationship, maybe had sex before or whatever. You don't know me. <laughs> don't give me no dick pics. That's the problem. Now we ain't saying that if we, you know, because sometimes you you away, you um, you, it might be a long distance relationship, or you could be on vacation, or they live in Brooklyn and I live in Queens. Like you, like let me. Those that's fine if I asked you, but don't be sending. Don't, don't just be sending random women that you don't. First of all, we could be grimy because your dick could be plastic. Yo, you don't. You need to stop. They need to stop doing that. Cause they don't know what we be doing with these dick pics. We literally be having it in our chats. Girl, look at this, look at this. And and just because the your penis is big, that don't mean it's cute. Cause the dude had the nerve to send me his dick pic. Yes, it was big, but it was ugly as shit. All right? I was like, oh my gosh. It was not circumcised. It had this hook. Oh God, it was just not cute. That's a that's what really pissed me off. Hold it's on. a no go. <laughs> it's like no. Hold on. What is people saying? Cut. Literally cut. Somebody said that's crazy thing. It's probably not even his own dick. You know that's right. It probably ain't because there's so many no limit soldiers out here that they can't differentiate the ones with the morals. Exactly. All dicks and no money make no sense. <laughs> Oh no, this particular guy, because they think we're thirsty, no high, no high value men. Exactly. So this guy, he proceeds to say, oh my God, if y'all don't, if y'all not, if y'all don't have me on Facebook, y'all, I had screenshot some of the stuff that he said. Because I told him not to call me no more, he was like, How I'm going, I'm the type of chick that mess around and be fucking gay niggas, and I'm gonna end up with a man that beat on me and cheat on me. All this because I didn't, um, once he sent me that dick pic and I didn't like it, I told him not to call me no more. We're going we gonna to get into that too. Like, I thought that men should be better at rejection at this because I'm from, you know, I'm from the hood and I grew up around a whole bunch of guys. And, you know, the guys used to stand on the corner or stand in front of the school or whatever. And every girl that walked by, they tried to talk to them. And 
every girl that walk by do not do not actually they get their number. I didn't know that guys be getting so butt hurt when they get rejected. I see my dudes from the block always getting rejected. If they hire ten girls, maybe they get one number. Like I don't understand this new sensitive. Um, women have gotten killed. Huh? Women have gotten a women have gotten assaulted and killed in these last couple of years over them merely rejecting a man. Men walking up behind them doing um. What is this? These fragile niggas gotta stop. I mean, these two feelings was hurt. Caught me a hoe. So then I blocked him. I blocked him on that number, guys. And then he started calling me and texting me from another number. So I had him on social media too. So I blocked him on social media. Once he realized that I blocked him on social media, he started saying, Ho, you blocked me on the book too. He calling me a hoe and he the one sending out um, pictures of his private part. Make it make sense. You how I'm the hoe. You ain't you don't got no pictures of my private part. You never kissed me. You never had sex with me. You never did none of that. But you calling me a hoe. <laughs> then then y'all would think that it would be over after that? No. So I guess he thought about it. He was like, oh, you running away a good nigga. You don't know. I got two jobs. I own my own crib. I drive a BMW. He, he started he running his own resume, which he already told me this before. And when he told me this within the first 48 hours, I was like, okay, that's cool. Like, nobody cares about that. I don't want no bum ass nigga. I want a nigga that got some shit, but I'm not really, that's not what's moving me. That's not what's driving me. Cause I, you know how I am. I'm like, what is you gonna spend on me? Cause I know a lot of guys that may have a lot of money, but is they gonna give you any of it? And then I know some dudes that's broke and that will give right. you all of their money. So I don't really care about that. You talking all that shit, but yeah, he putting all this in the text about, how much he got and all this, and I'm running a good nigga away. So after I guess he thought about it, and I wasn't giving him no airplay, like I wasn't going back and forth with him, argue with him or nothing. Then he changed his tone. Then he started sending an apology text. So then I had to block him from that number two. Like, I don't know what's going on. And so I have my guy friends that's in my life that I be getting these little advice from. And they just, they just be like, I don't girl. Hold on. Oh, shit. Okay, hold on. The crazy thing is probably that's not their own dick. Uh, good evening, money bands. You actually have a conversation with these bands on social media. I would be, I would be never. Um, well, as far as that is concerned, because you old school. Or that you not talking to no guy off of social media. That's where you meeting these guys at. Like, a lot of people, this is the thing. Like, people meet on social media. People meet their wives and their husband on social media. So you can't come, you are only blocking your own blessings if you're saying that you won't talk to nobody. People go on dating sites to meet people. You know what I mean? I, my niece and my, um, my niece and her husband met on social media. I know a lot of people that met, I, another one of my friends, she just got married and she met her husband on a dating site. So I'm, you can't block your blessings to say that I'm not going to um, talk to anybody on social media. I mean, to each his own, you could take that route, but I'm, I'm not going to say that I'm not going to talk or meet nobody on social media. I've met um, um, quite a few nice guys on social media, so I'm not going to say that. But okay, if you say that, if that's your choice, all right. As um, somebody say, especially if the shit is... <laughs> Yeah, one of my one of my cousins said that she don't talk to guys off of um, social media. She would never talk to anybody off of social media. And um, um, Moni said, especially if that shit is a turtleneck, talking about the um, the uncircumcised penis. Girl, it was uncircumcised. Yes, very ugly. <laughs> Yeah, it's, not, it's not the fact that you meet a man at, it's the fact that he has to have enough respect and he has to, you know, carry himself a certain way. I mean, that's almost insane for him to expose himself. And everybody was saying that you should have been the one who made some changes and you should do this and you should do that. It's always the women that has to get the stipulations or have to, you know, reroute and doing all that. And that's the part that I don't respect. He, he, we shouldn't have to do anything. What we're doing is what we're doing. And he needs to know as a grown man, nobody, when they first meet you, want to see your penis, period. 
Nobody wants yes. to. No. So so that's where we um where we we want to get other. Oh, my cousin says she could meet people at golf golf club lounges, five star hotels. I'm not doing no social uh, media. And they, 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 Okay, well, good luck with that, cuz. But we out here, we meet and people on social media too, okay? <laughs> we could do all that in person. We can meet people out in person. But you know, if you if you um come in the DM and we go on your page and you look interested, you might get a reply back. If you don't get a reply back, then you need to know I looked on your page and I wasn't interested. FYI, or those people that send well, my I, I am um I guess it's trying to come in. Yes. Guess was trying to come in. I'm trying to get our now. Ayana said, "What is a turtleneck? A turtleneck is the dude who got who um penis is not circumcised." For those of y'all who don't know what a turtleneck is, <laughs> <laughs> they being they being messy on Instagram. What happened to the guy? They say in? he's trying to get in. Where's Miss Carolyn? Our guest is coming in, guys. You see her? I don't. Where's Carolyn? I no, I don't. So how do you know she's trying to come in? She texts you? Yeah, she's texting me, and I'm trying to chat with Carolyn and text her and everything. Oh, she must have stepped away. Okay, so I guess we could to continue talking until Carolyn come in. It text her and let her know that we're waiting for her to accept our guest. But we're gonna talk, continue to talk in the meantime. Um, Ayana said, "No, I said what it ever. No, I said what it ever do to." Hey, Ray, now what a turtleneck is. Yeah, so that's what we're gonna talk about today. After um, our guests come on, so what? What? What also prompted this topic is I cannot believe like some of the feedback and suggestions that I was getting from some of my personal friends, instead of them saying, you know, they like, yeah, that was, he shouldn't have did that, but they more or less trying to critique me on what I should do not to get dick pics sent to me in 48 hours. Oh, well, you know, Fatima, you do be putting up a lot of pictures, a lot of sexy pictures, and you know, you wear a lot of clothes that's short, or you know, fitting and all that. So maybe yeah. you, so maybe you should like maybe try to dress a little more conservative. Or they was like, maybe you should try to wear, you know, maybe longer dresses or whatever. And I was like, why should I have to do that? And they was like, well, perception is everything, and the way a guy perceives you is the way he's gonna treat you. And that that ticks me off. Like like, I don't give a fuck on how you perceive me you treat people accordingly like this because somebody is dressed a certain way you gonna automatically treat them a certain way like so that that's the type of mentality like, like oh because this guy is a bum on the street like i mean literally homeless so you're gonna treat the homeless guy like shit no you treat i, I treat the homeless guy just like i would treat anybody else in the street everybody has everybody should be treated with respect until they give you some sort of disrespect so i want to get everybody's opinion on that so it's like we're it's like we're um we're moving backwards you know back in the days that people used to blame the rape victim you know the moment that a girl said that she was raped they want to do a whole background check and want to say well what did she have on was she leading him on was she's this like what are, what are we doing here and these are my people. These ain't strangers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So imagine what, how they would do with a stranger. This is why a lot of victims, well, I'm not no victim, but a lot of rape victims and stuff. What you say? It's completely absurd. And it really goes back to the stereotype and the difference with men and women. Like men can always do anything and it is justifiable. But when women um, you know, do something, it's all of them that, you know, all of a sudden, you know, gotta, we got to make the adjustments. We have to change. We're doing something wrong. So it's always going back to like a double standard. Like, you know why do we got to dump ourselves down? 
I'm so tired it's of these about getting ourselves down. It's just like, why do we have to adjust or do anything yeah. when you guys are clearly the one who were found negligent or you found you you were the one who found we found the fault in, you know? I don't care how I dress or Talk how I look. Yes. That does that does not merit you because something has to be in your brain for you to send me a picture of your penis or anybody's penis. <laughs> I wasn't standing out there saying, hey, I'm looking for a penis in here. Show me your mm -hmm. penis. Until I say, let me see that thing here for, then I don't want to see it. Exactly. Especially in the first the first couple of minutes and days. I mean, it's a completely, or the, the, the guys that randomly do it, I, you know, I mean, and then people want to check us and be like, well, what? Um, maybe you're attracting the wrong man because, no, nah, I'm not attracting anything. But prosperity, love, peace, joy, happiness. I ain't attracting no p ugly penises. I don't care what you say. <laughs> it's it's so it's that whole Trump. I think, like I said, we it's very yeah. Somebody said it's Trump mentality exactly, and this is why he made it into um, <laughs> president. Um, uh, won the election because they didn't find nothing wrong with his behavior. This man's like, yeah, grab him by the pussy. And you know how many other men probably felt like that was okay? That's why he made it into the um the whole president um presidency in the White House. Because now we're seeing like men are not really, you know, bothered by that kind of behavior. It's probably so many of them out there that probably want to just grab women by the vaginas as well. Yeah. They probably was looking at him like, yes, somebody's actually doing what we really want to do. But um Somebody said we have a, we have to change everything about us except wanting in your man to protect and provide complete. Then we're gold digging. Exactly, exactly. Trump mentality. Hey George. Yes, exactly. No, my my thing is this. I personally am not going to dumb myself down or dim my light for anybody else' comfortability. Like, what you see is what you get. Okay. Hi, guests. Guests, I don't know if your um, microphone is muted. Hi. Hi. Okay, we can hear you. Hi, everybody. We have Hi. our guests on now. Hi, guys. Hey, girl. Okay. Hey. <laughs> Hi. Everybody, I know y'all on IG man, y'all can't see her, but um, if y'all wanted to, y'all can go on to um, my page or Lakeisha Facebook page, y'all can see her. We, 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 we pretty much told them a little briefly about who you are, you're a contractor. I just want to start off by saying you're very beautiful. Oh, and I'm just, I, cause I didn't meet her before. <laughs> and and, and I, I love the fact, cause I also am in the um, utility, I work for a utility company as well. Okay. Well, I don't, I'm not out there in the field, but I love to see people that, women that's in male dominant fields and they still look cute and still, you, know, <laughs> you, know you ain't coming in here looking like a whole dude or nothing. So let's talk, tell, right. tell us about yourself. Look at her. Yes, okay. <laughs> you silly. Okay, well, yeah. Um, I am a contractor. I've been doing it for about five years. Um, I, I've been doing it on my own for about three years now. But I've been in the industry my whole life because my dad is a contractor as well. So uh, I have a brother, but he didn't get it. I don't know. It just came to me. And I, just, I love doing it. So um, and I'm a mom of three and uh, recently divorced. So, you know, starting dating again been uh love, just got in a new i know just got a new relationship so you know fingers crossed mm. <laughs> look at your face <laughs> you you must say hear our conversation before but get ahead yeah uh oh i don't miss it oh my god my you don't continue it but you you can stay on over <laughs> oh well you were lucky to find another mr right immediately you know <laughs> it wasn't immediately but honestly it 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 wasn't expected it definitely wasn't expected. I can't lie. And we are in Georgia as well? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Bit okay, so race. look, look, you see how we always so boy crazy. She talked talk about the men and we got <laughs> off of what she was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> 
you were talking about your your business. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. That focus, that focus. Um, so um when I first started my own company about three years ago, you know, I had been up under my dad, um, kind of doing it more on the back end. So like the paperwork, um, talking to the customers more doing that, but not really in the field. And I knew that's my passion. That's where I wanted to be. I wanted to be out in the field. I still wanted to deal with customers, but I love the contracting part of it. And um, so when I first stepped out, you know, it was challenging. He did not want to help me at first. You know, I had to do this thing on my own. So, um, but once he saw that I was serious and I just went out there, I fell over and over and over, but people kept, God kept sending people to help me in that and to get me out of jams. And I learned through that. Then he saw I was serious and he started pouring in, pouring knowledge and everything. So we're good now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And good now, for you. Good and now business is uh, and, 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 and what kind of, um, you know, girl, I done seen both you and every aspect. I admire you, Queen. You know, Thank know you. how to handle a whole lot. Because <laughs> also, you, um, you know, not only are you out there with the fine, you, you know, ran a beauty salon. Or kudos to you yeah. on that. You wear, you ran a beauty um, you know, make so you know, you know, you know that's a lot of work. Yeah, you, this is why we named you our know, show "Winning Women." Put, women, women. Like you've been a lot of our show today. Yeah, yeah sis. so you busting down walls and doing here. So <laughs> I actually um, got out of school, didn't couldn't figure out what I wanted to do. School just was not for me. I'm I'm an artist. I like to be out doing stuff. So I knew school wasn't for me. Um, so my mom was like, "Well, you need to do something," and I was like, uh, "All right, you know what? I'm gonna do hair." So I actually went to school and got licensed. Been licensed for ten years to do hair. I uh, did it for probably five years, and I was just like, "Nah, I'm out." And um, then the opportunity came for me to get a salon. And I was just like, okay, maybe I'll go ahead and buy a salon. Got it. And it just kind of went down. Uh, I had it for about six months. And then some legal stuff happened. So we ended up having to sell it. It was just a hot mess. But it was interesting. And most importantly, I met Keisha. And so to me, it was it was worth it. I met a lot of good people. So you literally like, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm showing ice. I have a, I have a habit. <laughs> So you literally like doing construction work more than you like doing the hair. Absolutely. Um, I guess because I'm a woman in this industry, a lot of time the men in the industry try to impress me. And so one thing I know is they are loyal. You know what I'm saying? When I get people to work with me and to do a project, they're loyal. I'm a loyal person. Oh, I'm sorry, but stylist, being a stylist, like your customer is not loyal. They see somebody else with a new haircut, they be like, "Oh, girl, who did that haircut?" Forgot all about the fact that I do haircuts. Absolutely. Y'all don't be loyal. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, I'm yeah, out. Right. This ain't stressing me no, out." You know, hairstyling is all about no trouble. Okay. Don't start no trouble. I got about four chicks that I be having <laughs> doing my wigs. See? And you know, I you know, I'm into promoting black people with black um businesses and I'd be kind of feeling bad tagging them all and stuff. It's like <laughs> I just got a new unit on. I ain't do that. I'm like, oh, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So that's how I'll be that's like, hilarious. you know what? Let me just I said this is too stressful. So, so the disloyalty is what uh push you away, huh? I was done. I was like, you know, because the thing is my but you know, my 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 teacher used to tell me. You ain't gonna last long in this business if you keep doing it with your heart. I put my heart in everything that I do. And so if I have somebody that's coming in to me, I don't get you a thousand dollars worth of free stuff within that time that you don't came to me. And you go to somebody else to color your hair, I'm gonna be looking at you sideways because I should have been taxing you then. And you know, <laughs> and you know what's so funny though? That only women do this. Because you know, yeah. men, they will be loyal. Yes, they will they cheat will. on their wife and their baby mother <laughs> and their girlfriends, <laughs> but they will not cheat on their barber. No, they no, will be not. walking around woofing for weeks talking about my barber on vacation. Yep. They will, they more well, like. Well, look, them. that's because they get the same haircut for the uh, same haircut and then part over and over. You know, we change out here. We flip the script so much, you know, so that's yeah. the difference. I mean, what I can say is that doing hair, like, 
you do have specialties. You know what I'm saying? So I get it if somebody else specializes in this thing. Exactly. That. But when it comes to construction, it's consistent. If I've consistently built a team of, um, you know, people who can subcontractors, then it don't matter what project we go on, you're going to get the same result. You know what I'm saying? That's all people want is results. Right, right. That's what, I, that really is my drive in construction is to see something from the beginning to the end. It's just, it, to me, I love it. And that, that's kind of why I like doing so hair. What are, some of the, what are some of the barriers that you had to cross as um, being a, a woman contractor? Were you treated fairly, unfairly? Were people are like, you know, being extra gentle with you or were they underestimating you? Like what are some of the experiences that you went through being a female contractor in a predominantly, say, you know, male field? I would say honestly all the above, but for the most part, I'm always underestimated. And um, I guess because I am a girly contractor. So I will- on Facebook. I will easily come on, you know, to a job site with, you know, dressing nicely. So because of that, they're either always underestimating me or always feeling like, oh, you know, let's just, uh, she's, she's sweet and soft. Let's just try to tiptoe around her knowledge when they don't know. Um, well, I, don't, so, I don't know, Queen. I don't know. Cause I seen you with that, that drill. I seen you with the soft and everything. You know, I work at home. Yeah, but the then let me tell you too, something. So. Right, the right next I day, you I'll, go to come work in with and I'll be different. You know what I'm saying? The very next day, I would have been, I got my hair braided. I come in, they like, Are you touching this hammer? Absolutely not. I don't even look like I'm touching the hammer today. So they don't really know how to deal with me, girl, because right. I will flip it. But <laughs> I think the biggest um, thing was just, uh, like I said, being unestimated because I what happens is. Facebook either. I'm sorry, guys. Let me ask you this, Queen. Now, as far as um, all of that have have you seen the difference and I know you do a lot of bids and you know you get paid well have you seen the difference in your pay as opposed to a man you know I know you look at different bids and you look at how you know you work with subcontractors what about you know the financial part have you oh, yeah. you know felt like they paid you less as a woman or how, how does think, that work um so recently I switched my business from working for investors to working for homeowners um, because I do think mm -hmm. that as a homeowner, they'll pay me probably more only because it comes with an experience. It comes with me helping you pick out colors. It comes with me helping you design the space. And so they'll pay a little bit more, but on the regular side, as far as subcontractors all the time, they come at me with crazy prices um, because they, again, they think I don't have the knowledge to know that's bull crap. There's absolutely no way you would have expected a man to pay this price. Um, and so I think that's, uh, I've definitely experienced that as far as pay from subcontractors. But again, once I show them that this is what I'm paying, you want this or you don't, then normally they understand, oh, okay, she's not that one. So they pay it. Yeah. Once, once you start dropping that knowledge and, and letting them know, you, yeah. you know, you, you and firm me, you know exactly. Struggle. My biggest then, struggle you know, was everything is, the knowledge. Everything is cool. Right. But I think it's also me trying to, okay, so I'm raised by a very strong man. I, mean, I was raised by my both parents, but my dad was very, uh, just a man's man. And so one of the things that he's taught me is mm -hmm. uh, how to respect a man in the, in the way that we, like as a woman, as I speak to a man, right? So with that being the case, uh, it's a real thin line for me um, because I'm in a male, male dominant field. Uh, I also have been sexually assaulted. So for me, I'm always thinking, protect yourself. So even when I'm in a situation where I feel like they're getting, you know, brolic with me, I'm always constantly thinking, okay, make sure you stay respectful enough that you don't aggravate them, um, but stand your ground. That's my biggest struggle because I can go in on somebody, but I can also make somebody feel real little. And as being in this male dominant world, I'm in a house by myself with you. I gotta watch how I talk to you. You know what I'm saying? Cause you get, you get in your feelings enough. You hit me. I don't, I don't care who I got coming back for you. I'm still hit. You know what I'm saying? So those are things that I have, right. to, have right. to think about. And that's, and that's the key thing that you said 
because you know I used to feel that same way too I used to always feel you know vulnerable when I'm mm-hmm. going into a house and we doing inspections and we doing yep. presentations and everything you know that that was always you know you always have to be aware of that as right. a woman how you present yourself how mm-hmm. you say yourself what you know what would trigger a man to get angry because it could go you know all the way left in just a few seconds exactly. so it's not only you it's so many factors that you have to exactly. keep in when you in a male dominated mm-hmm. business yeah so I, you just have to have a whole yeah. approach you know this is almost yeah. something that you may have to you know rehearse so you would be safe and you know you would still you know handle the business effectively exactly yes i also wow that's amazing i work for um a utility company too i'm now in the um in the office but i used to be in the field and that was the same thing it's a a safety issue for us as well Mm -hmm. we we out there working by ourselves going to these strange women i mean strange men um place i have had some experiences where you know the the, um, supers had to let me in and um literally i had to get up out of there they done pulled out their penis talking about oh they about the pee in front of me and i'm yeah. like you know i you know automatically i got aggressive like what are you serious you know right. what I'm saying? but sometimes that work and sometimes that don't work you know yeah. what I mean? so i hated it yeah that which is so funny to me like you know kudos to you guys that's out in the field you know you women that are doing these male dominated um um you know functions but when i was out there I hated it. Like mm-hmm. I was, I, I I used to try to use my um feminine side to my bad advantage. I'd be like, "Oh, can you help me?" I, it works. It I, helps. I, it, 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 it's, <laughs> it's, it's it's good sometimes. You know, um, like my uh, ah. you know, my boyfriend has brought to my attention that I'm flirty. I didn't really notice it, but I guess when you're in this field you're going to use it, you know, to your advantage sometimes. And now I will say this, I tell anybody Absolutely. that works with me, you know, I'm in a male you see it world, now? but I'm not a male. Like I still be like, no, I'm not picking that up. No, I'm not no, doing yeah. that. Yeah, that's you know what I'm saying. I'm so, like, this is too happy. This trap door. Exactly. I'm like, oh, I'm starting to sweat. I need to stop. Can somebody okay, else go pick that real. up? I'm going to be honest with you right now. You know, I'm giving you your kudos and, you know, I respect what you're doing, but I'm going to be honest. Um, I work for a utility company in New York and they have all of these things, all of these kind of like what they call women in the field meeting, like women that work in the field and we all conjugate together um, like every quarter of a month, every quarter of the year. Everybody talk about their experiences and how you be having all these kind of women in there no disrespect, some of them are looking real masculine and stuff, and they be like arguing for women's right, talking about, I want to be treated equal. Right. I could do the same thing the man could do. Yeah. I don't need no how I'm sitting there like, I don't belong here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm sitting there like, mm, no. I do not feel like this. No, I cannot do what he d- no, do. No, other words, you, be, you, re- you really be in a testosterone meeting and yeah, you, you, I, in the wrong, you in the wrong <laughs> meeting. It's a little, a little too much testosterone no. exactly. huh? I be sitting there like, I totally disagree. They are not speaking for all of us women. No, it, because... It be women that really be mad. Yeah, no. I'm not like that at all. Not with that mm-hmm. or all of that. It's exactly. Like, this is where the guys get confused at. They don't yeah. even know how to treat us because right. being a gentleman, we got some girls be like, I got this, what you think? I don't know how to do it myself. I be like, yo, you need to go. You know, it. what's crazy is, um, I, I mean, when I say I completely agree, I'm the type of person that I say, I'm. we're not... I'm not worrying about trying to be equal with you. I, you do stuff that I won't do. At the same time, if I have to, I'm going to step in. And that's where you guys see if I'm using a saw or something. It ain't because I really want to. That end of it, I'm not, uh, I like the art of it, but I don't have to do. I'm agreeing with you. Like, if I can have my team where I don't have to touch a saw, I'm not touching it. But if I do, it'll just be because I'm like, dang, I ain't, I ain't did it in a while. I want to do it. That ain't something I'm trying to, you know, my my yeah. end more so is orchestrating. You but, know what's so crazy? Call me stupid. But I don't, uh, th- when I say that we are equal, I'm meaning that I want equal pay. 
But no, I don't want to do the equal work. No, I do not want to do what no. this big old muscular man is doing. Because he well, don't do that. Um, but listen, be, be, listen, being a woman is all about playing your position. So, you know, if you, you, you know, being a woman is about playing your position. So you don't have to do anything a man does. Right. You are supposed to fall back off of some things. But right. I agree with you. It's about being equally respected and right. equal pay. Exactly. It ain't about doing, doing, so why, work work. Hard? Exactly. why work hard when you can work smart. I listen, work smart. Listen. I don't work hard no more. Listen, I don't listen, work hard no listen, more. Listen, I work listen, hard sometimes. Listen, but Linda, if a man around, listen, I'm going to work listen. smart. Linda, listen, me, you, and her may be on that same type of time, but there are women out yeah. here legally, literally fighting mm -hmm. to get equal. Who the hell is Linda? I'm like, Linda, when she joined us? That's the, you don't know, listen. Come on Linda, now. Boy from the, um, show your age. I'll tell you about it later. It's a the little boy that's from the internet that you say, Linda, Linda, listen. But um, anyway, no, there are women out here mm -hmm. that are literally fighting for rights. Like they want, they want to be. Oh yeah, active. I know that. Yeah, yeah. Ian Moran and all that. I literally work for a huge company and a huge utility company, and these women, are, you you have to see them in these meetings. I'm mean, like, is y'all serious? <laughs> don't fuck this up for all of us because all of us do not feel like this. Right. You know? no. Some of us want to be treated like ladies mm -hmm. and those of you guys that don't want to be treated like ladies, don't treat them like ladies, but I make it very clear or that I'm one of the, I'm one of the ones that want to be treated like ladies. Exactly. You know, when I was in the field and I used to have to wear uniform, all of us wear uniform. You would see me at the meat spot with my pink hat on, with the yeah. matching scarf. I have my uniform on, mm -hmm. but I have on my little girly accessories. Right. Like, Yo, why do you gotta be such a girl? I'd be like, what? Uh, exactly. What? I tell them all the time, I'm just in this field. I can't help that, but I'm still a woman. You know, I think that was the biggest struggle too. Like coming out of um we can have equality both ways, but a real gentleman will help her. You can have it both ways. Have this debate with my employees and the men are right. <laughs> <laughs> I know we are so difficult. I'm not going to lie. We talk about men being difficult, but we are too. But you know, just like we can't live with the, without them, they can't live without us either. We Period. just want to find some common ground and try to figure this whole yeah. man woman um, thing out. And that's why we try to have shows like this and sometimes it gets a little um, biased because most of the people on here that always comment be female. But we try to encourage men to come on and chime in too because mm -hmm. this is how we get to understand each other. Yeah. We have to have female, more female and male dialogue. Yeah. We can't keep on talking amongst our friends and y'all keep talking amongst y'all friends. No, we all have to get together and talk. Cross, yeah. you know, you know, talk um, males talk to females and we have group discussions like this yeah. so we can get a better understanding of each mm -hmm. other that's we exactly what i was gonna say at least on our show they could definitely understand how we feel so we can have a better understanding and have more effective communication it's not that we bias we only speaking from our point of view because we're women we don't know how to speak from a male's point of view mm -hmm. we just clearly state in some of the issues that we've experienced mm -hmm. and it's not all of us you know everybody has their own individual you know experience mm -hmm. but you know we just getting it out there so we can the problem with us is that we don't communicate right so th this is our platform and we want some men to chime in and call up this is a platform for us but yes yes miss williams tell them about your business how they reach you you know if they wanted to get a bathroom you know what what um you know um scope of work that you do on a house and all of that good stuff tell them about you and your business so they'll know how to reach you and we can get some some extra sales coming your way. Okay. Listen up, um, everybody on IG. She about to drop her info. Yes, on IG, you can find me at Contractor Barbie. Contractor oh, Barbie. Her name is Contractor Barbie. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and on uh, Facebook, um, under the J Renee firm, Renee is R E N A E. R E N A E. Um, and I usually post my stuff up there. Uh, 
And IG, I'm really trying to get better at that, y'all. But I do, I, I'm, I'm posting on IG. I could be messaged on IG. Also, you can um, hit me up at my email address, which is the J Renee firm at gmail.com. So let me ask you a question. Do you travel for work too, or you only work in um, the Georgia area? So um, That's my- The J Renee firm at gmail.com? Yep. The J Renee firm at gmail.com. Um, no, I actually okay. right now I've only done business in Georgia, but my 2021 goal is to definitely get a contract out of the state. So guys, you listening, look, let's link up because I'm definitely yeah. trying to get out of Georgia. I got some of my homeowner friends out here on the line. <laughs> y'all hear her? Y'all hear your P? Y'all hear I, um, um, I love you. That piece of willing to travel to do some, you know, bust down some walls and do some contractor. Yeah, you can have mimosas and shit while uh, on your break. <laughs> 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 yes, oh that will that that would be cool. So you got um, my thing is if you had to do or if you were to take some um out of out of state contracts, how would that work? It would have to be small jobs because if it's a big job, then what are you going to do? Like relocate for six months or. Well, for me, typically, um, if yeah, I yeah, that's what to, most people do. Yeah, well, I'll go back and forth. Yeah, but I'll have a, I'll have to create a team there. So mm -hmm. I'm in a um, networking group called Black Girl mm -hmm. um, in Real Estate, and so when I say is women all over this this world, like this country, that just coming together. So if I say I'm like I said, I was coming up to Detroit. I had women hit me up saying, "Let's link up. Let's meet up." So. I honestly have a village just right there. So if I'm going somewhere, I know they're going to send me some people and I manage those people and, and bring my guys, the couple guys that I have one, under my one team. One of my friends on here, she said, yes, yeah, she needs some work done for 20, 2021 and 2022. 22. She's trying to do her bathroom over. Okay, that's what's up. Well, we all the way in. Oh, well, she's in Jersey. Okay. Y'all talk, y'all talk. Hit me <laughs> up, man. Hit me up for real. Hit me up. So actually, you, you really would travel all the way to New York? So, okay, let's say it's a job like a bathroom. How long would it take, how many days or weeks would it take you to redo a whole bathroom? Um, like I just did a bathroom here in Douglasville. Okay. As long as I have everything lined up, about two weeks, depending on what we're doing. Um, but I mean, That's again, right. in Georgia, my people, they move for me because I've been working with them. So, um, it'll be different when I go somewhere else. I just have to see um, the team that I pulled together. But for the most part, doing a bathroom, if it's already there and you just remodeling it, it's about two to three weeks. Right. Refacing and gutting is two different things. So gutting takes longer and refacing is quicker, right, sis? Oh, right. Yeah, so that's the, that, that would be the issue. I'm, I'm really thinking that it's just you. But no, so whatever job that you do, you have a team that have to come with exactly. you as well. Mm -hmm. So that would be kind of, you know, difficult. But no, no, also, like I said, because I have a team of people who Not at all. Are, are in different states. So as long as I go somewhere and someone says, I use this team, this, this subcontractor for my towel, then I'll, I'll go and look at their work, oversee them doing that project. You understand what I'm saying? So it's not me physically doing it or necessarily me having a team. The thing about my job is I manage people. I manage subs to make sure that the job gets done. It's a benefit so because you, boss boss. Have to <laughs> you don't have to look for, you know, subs and, and see if they're going to screw you over all that. I'll handle all of that and make sure it get done. That's my job. So I just pull a team together. That's how I would do it. Okay. Okay. So you hear that guys out there? She ha she's not doing it right now, but that's her goal for the upcoming years to start yeah. taking um, contracts outside of Georgia. But I have people on here that's, you know, I have my, um, my family that live in Georgia too, and they all own houses. So again, if y'all out there, if y'all not listening right now, y'all go back to the show and look at, look at it on our YouTube page, the Sidor Radio YouTube page, or y'all see it on our Facebook page. Um, y'all wanna y'all need some work done? Support this black woman, mm -hmm. this black entrepreneur that's a contractor, and she's located in Georgia. And you um you do you work all over Georgia or just certain counties for now? I know you say you don't you're you're not doing outside of Georgia um this year, but 
for the most part, you work, you work all over Georgia? For the most part, depending on the project, um, if I'm going to go to like Savannah, then I, I well, nine times out of 10, not go to Savannah for something like, oh, I just want my house painted. No, it have to be, you know. Yes, and that's what I wanted you to talk about, Jessica. What scope of work do you do? Are you doing, I know, you know, right now is our roofing season. Are you doing roofing? Are you doing gutters? Like what scope of work so people will know yeah. what, what it is you specialize in. So, you know, if they have a need for that, they can reach out to you for that specific type of job. So I specialize in renovations, um, like big or small. So going in, doing the bathroom renovation or doing your whole house or basement renovation, um, as well as uh, I do do roofing, um, new bills and um, paint. If I do paint though, it's going to have to be, uh, it's not like little rooms. I just got to be honest. I've gotten way past being able to come in and just paint a room. I don't, I can't take that on, but I could take on a whole house painted or a whole exterior paint job. Okay. All right. That's what's up, Jesse. And I want to thank you so much. You have been such a tremendous support to me. Um, you have bought the most lip gloss ever. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you for no always problem. you know supporting me and you know just showing so much love. You always posting, shouting out. You know, I had a blast at your um birthday dinner. Yeah. Thank you so much, Queen. I appreciate thank you, hun. And I look forward to doing a couple of roofs with you soon. Yes, we gotta make it happen, Keisha. We got to. we will, we will. You said before the year's over, so we I still know. got a couple of weeks, okay? I, I got one in I got one installed, but um I'm looking forward to doing it with you. Okay, sounds good. Nice. All right. Well, you enjoy. We appreciate you. All right. Thank you so much. Black girl magic. Keep that black girl magic popping. We out here winning. All right, girl. Good luck and everything that you're doing. All right. Thank you guys so much. All right. All right. Talk to you soon, Jess. All right. Bye-bye. Okay, everybody. That was um our our that was our um guest that we had for today. For the our um, black entrepreneur that we were highlighting, so um, I don't know. Some people were saying that we were um, not being seen on, on Facebook. So can you guys see us on Facebook? Now? Go over to Facebook and see. I don't know. I know when I went on it, I didn't see it either. It said the page was um, the host had took it off. So. Can anybody um, confirm if they can see us on Facebook now as well? And we're going to get back onto our topic. Excuse me, ladies, you are live on Facebook. I'm looking at it. It says live on Facebook. Okay. Cool. Okay, so yeah, I see it now too. I see it. All right, everybody. This is the door radio. Big girls ready, y'all. Everybody out there in Sedora land. Hope y'all having fun. Y'all listening in, tuning in. Everybody in Facebook land. Big girl Black Lori. Yes. Who are you? Okay, if y'all want to call in too, the number is uh, in Sedora land. In case you guys, you know, y'all can't comment in on our social media pages. Y'all can call in. The number is 929-231-6415. If y'all want to call in and chime in on our topic, um, 929-231-6415. So uh, everybody there on Facebook and IG. So now we're going to get back to um, what we're talking about. We were talking about, you know, women, boss chicks, having or um, or people, not um, or men that are um, fragile and easily, why they so easily intimidated by us and they feel like that we need to dumb ourselves down or change how we are to make them feel more comfortable. So what do you guys got to say about that? Um, have any of you guys experienced the same thing? Do y'all agree? Do y'all disagree? I want some guys to chime in and some ladies to chime in as well. How do y'all feel about that? I told y'all about my situation or whatever. If y'all don't want to talk about a situation y'all went through, Y'all can give me your input on um, that situation that I went through. You got. And we also. 
talking about we also talking about women winning because we got a new vice president that's a woman and we excited about that and you know all the positive things that women been doing and so you know we want to hear y'all opinion on that because you know it seems like no matter what a woman does and 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 how you know how many accolades we get it seems like it, we never get recognized or we never get you know what i'm saying um you know we just never hold hold our place in our communities and from men so we want to hear you know from some men and see why that happens like the whole thing with with not only fatima but camilla harris where she has you know done a tremendous job and you know she overcame many hurdles to get to this position um and people are still and a lot of men are still poking you know holes and you know the sister's story you know trying to you know take away from you know her accolades or take away from this whole victory that she has won um if it's yeah, not about the race also a question about that what's your opinion on that being that you're speaking on her about camilla um, harris do you know you consider yourself pro-black i consider myself pro-black do you do you take discredit her or take anything away from her because she's married to a white man does that because that's some of the that's some of the criticism that she's um that she gets like oh she's married to a whole white guy what do you feel about that does that does that make a difference should that make a difference like who she decided to marry or who she's sleeping with no i it, it doesn't because i'm a woman and and i'm sure like her she probably dated black men and she who she picked you know, I'm sure she picked out a love. Anytime you go to the step of being married, um, you know, she probably chose her husband out of love and other, and, and you know, other um, issues. And me being a black woman and dating black men, I'm just going to be honest. I mean, it's plenty of times that, and I've dated, I've dated, um, I've dated a white man before. Really? I've dated a white man before. That's it was briefly. Me. Okay, hold on. Let me check my. How was that? It was fun. It was a breath of fresh air. Really? It was totally different. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. how long did you guys date? Probably about 90 days. <laughs> 90 days? <laughs> and so... I gave them the... Is it true? Well, you know I couldn't move forward because you already know why I couldn't move forward with it because I, <laughs> I couldn't do the, you know, everything, you know, it had, he was a great guy, terrific energy. Um, it was something new for me. And, you know, I felt like that, that's what I had needed. You know, I was so used to dating the same type of men and getting the same type of results. And I know that if you want to change something, you change, you know, you, you change it. You get the same thing, you get the same results. It's not rocket science. So you can't give us the real tea because you didn't go all the way with him. All right, so we have somebody. You know, you know I found that thing up. I mean, I didn't go all the way because it was not. Oh, okay. So that's why. Like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Somebody <laughs> tea said. Tina says no woman should have to dumb herself down to stroke a man's ego. Exactly. Then we have P says um, black folks are our own worst critics. The movie Something New opened my mind to it's I don't want to know pink one either. <laughs> oh, she, she's talking about that and she's talking about the pink penises. But once I get past the pink part... <laughs> No, it was a wonderful experience. You know, it was on a whole different frequency. Well, it me, was clean cut. But what about, okay, the pink part? Now, was that a problem for you? Was what it mean? just the size or the pink part? Yeah, I, I can't, can't, I mean. Because what about, the skin? you know, I try. Because I'm a pink, huh? talking about the pink penis. You know, Spanish dudes' penis is penis, um, pink. So when you don't date Spanish guys? No, I didn't. No, I never date Spanish guys. I don't, I don't like Spanish guys. Really? No. I don't like them for me to date them. No, I don't. It's a well, weird... In 
for me. Why does it give you Caucasian um, in it vibes? Like it feel like it's the same thing or? Like no, what? it doesn't at all. In fact, I know that they probably as close to us as possible, but it's another energy that I can't explain. It's something that's on a different level. It gives me like some dark, energy to a certain degree and you know i don't know if that's what i'm saying is correct but you know when, women go intuition and instinct and i'm one of them type of ladies and i think moms have, have saved me you know because i put my back in the days i put myself in a lot of situations where god provided intuition and instinct for me and certain things won't just get allowed for me so and that was one of them i never 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 so no that's a no-go for me no, no, no Spanish poppies for you. He says she with you. She can't do the Spanish um either. Y'all going and they're gorgeous. All of that. They're gorgeous men, and there's a lot of them that are very fine and very influential and all of that. Um, the Kate once it was one cable guy that I almost went with, but he tried yeah. to make me his yeah. his daughter's mother and before. That was way before that was way before I even was considering kids and he was like really emotional and all of that you know I can't have an emotional man I that's something I can mm -mm. so in any in any in any who with with the uh, with um Peter Peter was the Caucasian young gentleman that I was dating um everything was there like I felt I was shocked that I had a chemistry with him I, I was shocked that I was attracted to him <clears throat> no but when when it physically no when it when it physically came to you know Yo, I was, this is, hold on, hold on. <laughs> when it came to commit it felt peculiar and it looked peculiar up against my skin it felt clammy it was like hairy Belafonte it was hairy and it was <laughs> kind of watching what I was saying because I was like I don't want to offend nobody but I know she wasn't going to get offended my sister-in-law she on IG she's Spanish she um you know she got a, um, her son which is my nephew and he um his father is black she say this all the time too but she said girl I can't do Spanish poppies either and it seems so funny because she's Spanish both of her parents are Spanish but why is that? It's a lot of Spanish girls that say the same thing too. Like they can't do the Spanish dudes. And it's a lot of Spanish dudes that only mess with black girls. Like that is so weird. I don't know, I don't know why I really was, cause you know, Spanish would be a go-to. You know why? why can't you I didn't, do I never do something energy. Hmm? Mm -hmm. it's like it's it's like us being black saying that we can't do the spin um the black guy thing but it is so common within the um hispanic community i um i i'm gonna say that all of my all of damn near, all of my hispanic friends all have black um husbands or black baby fathers or black boyfriends they never, I've never seen with no spin Hispanic young ladies, I know. Yeah, and the Spanish too. That's, you know, my you know, mother is married to a Hispanic young like, lady. What is that a thing? Yeah, my, my sister, my sister in law is Hispanic, and my niece, my two nieces are Hispanic. That that that's weird. That is that. I don't want. Really, I need somebody to explain that. But why why is that? You know, I like them foreign out the jungle. So. You like them African, right? <laughs> and Haitian. <laughs> if y'all like African or Haitian, I like them straight off the boat, swinging off a tree, baby. Come here, child. Okay, we have an answer. Tina said a lot of Spanish men have the ideal that women belong in the house. They shouldn't. They sh Oh, we got a, we got a caller, huh? So that's on my, my main line. They shouldn't cook and clean. Oh. We are controlling. That's true. So... I don't want to be sounding all stereotypical too, but those people that I do, those people do I do know, a lot of the Spanish people that are in the um, Hispanic on Hispanic um, relationship, the men I used to be seeing, you know, not to say that I know them per se, but that, that, that the, um, you know, that's in the neighborhood, the men did used to be beating up on the women and, 
you know, the women were so timid and you, you just you had not really speaking to nobody with all the little kids and not looking, you know, just looking straight ahead of her and all that. So I do know that that is very common in that, um, in the Hispanic culture. What you said right now, matcha chino. <laughs> what, <y'all, laughs> what are you talking about right now? <laughs> All right, so we're not going to get on a um, Black um, Hispanic topic. We're going to stick to the topic at hand. So, Tina, you were saying that no woman should have to dumb herself down to stroke a man's ego. And I agree. Like, why is this a thing? Why do, why are these why are these men so goddamn fragile? Like, I don't know. It's not fragile. Why, it's and, and you know what's so, you know what's so funny? about it like um a lot of a lot of these men be insecure and fragile and easily intimidated by you know boss chicks or assertive chicks or whatever and they be trying to have you um dumb they want you to dumb yourself down or not be so vocal but these are the same men i mean and, and as soon as something go wrong like if some injustice happened to them they go to jail god forbid you know um some legal aspects, they get shy or something where they need the support mouth. act. They want our big mouth, assertive, strong asses to come fighting for them then, then too. And what I don't understand is as a man, you should want somebody that is a reflection of you. If you consider yourself an alpha or you a strong guy, why would you want to be with some weak woman? Because especially this is a woman that you... um take it serious like you want to marry and have kids with because you god forbid you know you get sick you get you or you die this is the woman that you're going to have taking care of your kids handling your business handling the house or whatever you don't want no weak passive chick that's going to get ran over and um, um manipulated so why wouldn't you want somebody that's strong minded like yo i know I don't even got to worry whether I'm around or not. My baby going to hold it down. Like, I don't understand why y'all trying to get women like myself to conform to some weak shit. I mean, y'all could keep on trying, but that ain't going to happen. But I'm just like, why would you even want that? And you know what? I'm going to give a little short story. Not a short story, but you know what's so funny about some people? The same reason they're, you are, they're, you attracted, they're attracted to you, but the same reason why they don't like you. You know, I've had guys. Isn't that weird? weird? Right. That's so weird. I like you because you're a strong black woman and I like your vibe and all that. And in the same be- it'll be the same reason why things ain't work out. Girl, you too much for me. I don't know. You too much. Like, I'll be like, oh, I thought you liked that. Oh, you thought it was, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, get, um, be careful what you ask for. Carolyn said Hispanic women do not date Spanish men because they can't be very, do- they can be very dominated. It starts with the mindset. What age group of men is this conversation on? I don't, I mean, not, <laughs> I don't, and we ain't, we ain't putting no specific um, age on it. Somebody said they do not like light skin blacks. They don't like light skin blacks to date. <laughs> Y'all are really going there today. We are not. It's like what? They don't like to date light skin men. <laughs> So, Mr. I can't what you said, them being too macho. Hey, Toro. Yeah, that whole macho shit. Like, boy, bye. You so macho. And it's like, you know what? Somebody made a comment on here that said that they wanted us to change everything. They want us to change how we think about everything else other than that protecting and providing stuff. You know what I mean? Like, you, you know what they want us to do? They really want us to, um, if it doesn't benefit them, they, they want us to change all, all around the way to for it to benefit them. Everything that don't benefit them, we need to change about ourselves. But everything else, yeah. that, you can keep that, that. That benefits me. But that right there, I don't like. It, does, it's no, it holds no value to me. You know, I don't respect that. I don't want that. Or that makes me feel uncomfortable. Everything about us that's like that, they want us to change. Right. Only an alpha male can accept an alpha female. Look at Michelle and Obama. Both alphas. Exactly. That's my thing. I I, I need an alpha. 
I don't, I know I got a strong personality and I know I'm a lot to deal with. So that's why I need a strong guy that is um, confident in himself and not int intimidate by my confidence or my assertiveness. And, and, respect, and respect the female's perspective and opinion. I don't understand right. why they want to suppress our opinion, it, you know, because it's not to the point where we won't let a man be a man. I'm, I'm not trying to be a man. But I, I, I am firm. Heavy. I don't want. I know how to. I don't want. I don't want to be you. I don't want to be you. And me being a, me expressing myself, just like the other day, I was so disappointed. I was speaking, and the gentleman was like, "Oh, you got a slick, smart mouth." No, I don't have a slick, smart mouth. You said something to me. I responded with a clear and concise response, and then you switched it and said, "Oh, I got a slick mouth." Well, what you said to me was fine. But when I had a response immediately after that, you felt like, I don't know. I, I was like, this is going weird because it was expressing myself after you said something. So now I got an attitude and I got a slick mouth and everything like that. I don't get it. Girl. I don't get it. People want you to talk. How do men want you to talk? I knew exactly what I wanted. I knew exactly how to get well, we got it, what win. was needed. We got and I expressed that to you. Then it was, I was, I was, you know, talking slick. I got a slick mouth. I got an attitude. I'm like, what? I'll be with you. you weird. Mr. I can't with you want to respond to, he want to start smoke because he laughing. Well, um, Tina said something about, you know, Michelle and Obama both being alpha and stuff like that. Mr. I can't with you said Michelle doesn't overstep her position as his wife. Some women overstep their position. You want to handle that? Yeah, how you he said what? He said Michelle doesn't overstep her position as his wife. Some women overstep their positions. What do you mean overstep their position? No. What it is is Obama is content. Michelle was out there doing, winning people over to the country, being a boss, doing everything she needed to be. And he was secure with himself. And he didn't feel like it was no no position, but for her to do what she needed to do. And that, in fact, added on to him and it made him a greater president because Michelle put in a lot of effective work with the school nutrients programs, a lot of stuff. Michelle was very, very vocal. And a lot of the times, Baba was late. Because she has her own position. I don't understand that overstepping position um, even comment. Like, what is he talking about? Right, but see, that's that's what they mean. Caveman overstep her position. Yeah. That's that um that's that caveman um mentality. Anybody want to call in? Y'all can call in at nine two nine two three one six four one five. What is the position? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get that. Clarify. Simply be equal and work together. I say our position is simply to be equal and work together. No, no, that's what we think. But he said that she be uh, that she didn't over she doesn't overstep her position as his wife. That's why it worked between Michelle and Obama. That's what he's saying. But um, you know what? What's your what's position as? They must, they must be dealing with women with women who just blatantly disrespect them and say stuff because. We don't blatantly be disrespecting dudes like, yeah, motherfucker, what you want? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We don't, okay. We don't okay. Be okay. I don't I don't do that either. But if we go back to my live yesterday, I'm about to put my boy Barry on, on blast. You see how the whole live started? Because we was talking about the same topic. He, the man asked me a, a situation. He was like, well. I mean, you know, I told him about what a couple of my friends had said about maybe I need to dress a little more conservative. And then, you know, because men, you know, look at how women are dressed and that's how he determines how to treat her. So he said he kind of agreed with that. And then he was like how um, maybe I should, you know, dress a little more conservative or whatever. And I was like, I don't have to dress no kind of way. I, no, I don't give a damn if I'm walking down the street with my ass hanging out. You don't have nobody has no right to disrespect somebody, you know. You you um and then he asked me, 
Yo, it's, it's about like, let's say me, I dress with my fittings so my Tim's on looking all urban and you got a dude that's dressed in um, a three-piece suit. You're going to address us in different ways and treat us in different ways. So he said, wouldn't you? And I told him, no, I would not. The man got mad at me and stopped talking to me because we was driving on our way going to the gun range. And because I did not, uh, because I did not agree with him, this is this, this is this fragile um, egos that I'm talking about. Where I didn't talk to him nasty or nothing. The mere fact that I didn't agree with him, we had a whole situation. You know what? I don't even want to talk about. It. Go ahead, go ahead. Just, I'm, I'm gonna just shut up because you no, no, no. You already know, huh? You already know. You already know. B. From a yeah, very be big on it because he's a bona fide caveman, and this is why every time me and him get together, we get the arguing. Because he, well, you know, he only picked he's a sweet guy. He only picked a sweet woman, but but sis, he only he only pick a certain type of woman. It's the only it's a certain type of woman that he could operate freely around. So, and you know, you know how that is. He he pick he pick a certain frequency of women so he could be there and they could be you know you well, know how very that's the type and then he'd be trying to um come at me like i'm that type no boy you know i got a p on my own i ain't having that dumb shit that you be trying to do oh they going off on instagram right here so somebody says exactly she knew her position she didn't try to be president she stayed a lady a first lady and everything she said or did she said i stand with my husband so then Tina responds, says, does he need footage of Obama stepping aside to give her the limelight in every platform? I think he does, Tina. Then uh, Mr. I Can't With You says, Glory, some women do come off like that. Tina says, who said she wanted to be president? He go, uh, Mr. I Can't With You says, said, stepping aside, yes. He stepped aside to show her show his wife ability to be an articulate to articulate in an articulate person in his life and how he can pick a great woman she goes she is in her own lane therefore she is in her own position her position is not his wife and he goes she is mrs obama <laughs> michelle obama he is his wife not not the president this is what's going on on ig did you hear did you hear all of this? Mr. I can't with you trying to start a war. As usual. Yeah, uh huh. He likes to he's trying to bait me, but I'm not. I'm gonna let my sister in law handle this. Chew him up and spit him out, Tina. Go ahead. I got you. <laughs> Go ahead, Tina. Please, you can answer that. Because he's trying to get me all um all, all all worked up. Yeah, sip my tea. That's what I'm gonna do. Sip my tea. At the end of the day, they are the Obamas, and they both held their weight. And Obama didn't put um, Barack never tried to overpower her or make her play no position, and she was able to flourish and shine. And that's why they they are the Obamas, leave them. And that's why they marry and been married for all these years, and they look like they're in a healthy relationship. You never hear Obama talking about her position, like who, what kind of man, you know. Oh yeah, my wife knows her position. That's some caveman shit. Like you know, you know, people that's in healthy relationships don't even talk like that. I'm being like, yeah, my wife knows her position. Relationship where a man consistently tell me, humble yourself, humble yourself. I'm like, what? That's humble myself. Man, weak men that they they motherfucking they they so you, think, so so you so got it all. Right? That they got they gotta have their women in a uh, have a certain way or. And behave a certain manner, and if it doesn't go like that, they have temper tantrum, or they don't know how to, they don't know how to handle it. So they try to conform you and tell you maybe you need to, um, you know, dim your light and dumb yourself down. No, bro. He said, "No, I'm being serious. They're a great team, but aren't there gender roles? Yeah, there are, there are gender roles. Like the men supposed to take out the garbage, and <laughs> yeah, I, I mean this whole position. We are both male and women. Are both have mouths, and they are able to um, be 
I think both both roles should be able to be vocal whenever they want to. Or this, you know, um, being humble and speak when you spoken to, or let the man like we are adults. We have we, y'all have to stop this whole role and position. There's no position. We have a female as the first vice president. The first um, she's the first female vice president ever in history. There's no more roles or no position for us. We're playing all positions. If you haven't gotten. Newsflash, we just had a contractor out here, female contractor that's busting down when I'm busting down floors and doing everything a man is doing. We got a, a, a black uh, female vice president right now. There's no position. We're playing all positions. So once y'all get that through your heads, then maybe we can move, the, move forward as a culture, uh, as society, because right now, it seems like y'all not getting it. No matter how much, you know, how successful we are, and how much tribes we getting past. Y'all still ain't getting it. What is the number again? I don't know. If we got five minutes. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> what happened to um black? Oh my God. So it, it's us about to get off anyway. It's 929. Let's see. Say gender roles. Absolutely. It starts with the mindset. So it's not a competition. Well, anyway, I don't know. I guess my um, my co-host has some sort of technical difficulties because I see I'm the only one on there. And it's 8.56 anyway. Yeah, he, yeah, I only have five minutes. Actually, I don't. I only have four minutes. So, guys, it's been real. It's been a good show. And I'm going to, I, I guess, say, um, uh, um, I'm good. okay, she's back. Hold on. Okay. Let's see what we're doing. <laughs> what happened, Black? <laughs> I don't know. I hate something more that out. We have somebody that want to call in. Do you want to take this call? Who is it? Mr. I can't with you. That's up to you, Queen. The, well, the number is 929. Why did to decide to call at the end of our show? But go ahead. 929-231-6415. Mr. I can't with you. If you want to call in, that's the number. Let's see what the hell you got to say. Because we can't with you with all of this, okay? Mr. I can't with you. We can't with you. <laughs> Let's go. Right. Let's go. We got Let's go, Mr. Mr. I can't with you. Here you go. Now he said he ain't calling. All right. So it's nine o'clock. Are we? I'm gonna say our goodbyes. Any special shout outs? We want to shout out Carolyn in the uh, in the background. We usually have another person engineer. Um, I got Mark. But he was busy today, so we got our black queen Carolyn on the back doing the engineering. She's doing a great job. So we want to thank her first and foremost. Thank you, Carolyn, for helping out on such short notice and everything. No problem. Thank you, yes, lady. Really Thank you for taking your time and really, you know, doing the thing for us. We really appreciate you. We owe you big time. And she was so sweet. She wouldn't take anything we offered. Nope. It's okay. You didn't offer no liquors? <laughs> You don't want no lip gloss. You don't want no pretty um princess. Um, I have some. I actually bought some off of her. So you don't need no more, huh? What about, a crown? Yeah. what about a crown? Every queen needs a crown. You don't see that beautiful crown that she has on her head? I do. I actually do. But you know what? Y'all are colleague radio co-hosts, and I didn't mind doing it. Uh, Thank you. And tell them about your show, Carolyn. In the bank. We got you. You need us. We here. Okay. I understand. Thank you, ladies. You have a great well, anybody show. Anybody at the door land and IG land and Facebook land, um, we're going to be ending the show. I hope everybody has um, a wonderful two weeks. We will be back in um, the second Sunday of the month. I'm not sure what the date is. I don't know if this is a um, five week. Is this a five-week month? 
I don't know. We have to look at this. This, this is the um the, um November. So whatever we on every second and fourth Sunday. So whatever is, it may not be the last Sunday. Whatever is the fourth Sunday of this month, that's when we'll be back on. So it's been real. We appreciate all the um the viewers, the love, the support, everybody that chimed in. We love y'all, and don't forget to go to the Sedora, um, the Sedora Radio YouTube page. View, subscribe, and share, because we see y'all on um IG, on Facebook all the time. But we also need y'all to view um our show on YouTube as well. So. Again, go to the Sedora Radio YouTube page and then, you know, type in Thick Girl Radio and all of our shows is on there. Tonight's show will be on there probably tomorrow or later on today. So love you guys. And I uh, thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. We love y'all. Be safe out there. Celebrate. Have fun. Some good things coming up for us. I'm, I'm All right. Bye, IG. I want to get